I should shave this off so bad. Oh. Well, here we are, YouTube. BYUI uses Bio 375 for its genetics course, and um, if you take it online, you have to report, or you have to do a video every week. So here we are. Never really done these too much. Yeah. Big game this week. BYU plays Boise State. Boise State's going to destroy. So excited. Here. Looks like it's just me. You want to be on a live YouTube broadcast? All right. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my group members to get online, I guess. Do, 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 Hey, how's it going? Headphones are in again. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Is anyone else on yet? Just us. Jessica was the one that texted me yesterday saying that she wanted to do a uh, do a video this week to go over the stuff. And then Luca said he wanted to, and then he bailed at the last minute just like 10 minutes ago. So. Uh, well, I'd rather have somebody to go over it with than no one. Yep, I agree. There was just there was one question on this week that is still beating me up. I do not know what to do on it. Well, we can tr I can try. I don't know that I'll be very helpful. Yeah. But, yeah, I struggled with this one. I know that I did terrible on the other assignment. So Really? Which the individual or one of the groups? Yeah, the individual. I just didn't like have enough time to really think about it I was running behind so hmm. yeah well um, we'll get better tonight I guess hopefully <clears throat> well let me sh I'm gonna shoot a message to Jessica real quick cool Yeah, and I never heard back from Alex, so she probably doesn't want to do one. She's taken the class, I think she said, like, twice, and she, like, kind of had to drop it around, like, now. So she's probably fine. I think that um, she said she was going to – or maybe that's your number. Um, are you on the group text? 
I'm not. I was not included, but it's okay. Okay. Um. So I think Alex said that she was going to do it. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, Jessica just just told me uh, she couldn't she couldn't make it. So that's a bummer. So I guess it's just you and me right now. So. Yeah, I think um, Alex just texted, too, that she's not going to be able to make it, so um, we can just run through them really quick. Yep. So let's see here. Let me pull it up here. I got a split screen. Boom. There we go. Okay. I wasn't sure what it meant by the null hypothesis. Um, one of the videos we watched said, like, um, there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. Mm -hmm. So is that like basically what she wanted? Um, kind of. So like when it's, when it's talking about like running a chi-square test, essentially what you're doing is you're um, comparing it to what should in theory happen. Like if you were to draw out, you know, the Punnett square – or in this case, you know, like if you were to do the the um, the cross with the two different genotypes, right? So like for number one, it's like the green, like what color and the shape or texture of the uh, of the pod, what it should be. So essentially, like in a if on paper, if you um, cross the F1 plants, you should get a nine to three to three to one ratio um of of um phenotype of genotypes excuse me and so with that you would say okay so the 9331 ratio would be mendel's theory of genetics right and so you do the chi square test to see if that actually happened okay um so like for my null hypothesis I put like we will get that ratio and the alternative is that we won't. Oh, and I didn't upload the pictures from my phone yet, so I don't even I'll have to bust out my notebook real quick. But that's um that's kind of what it's talking about when you're doing um I don't know exactly what your graduation requirements are, but um if you you'll probably more than likely have to take biostatistics. Um this is something that you go over kind of like null hypothesis. So like for me, this week was kind of easy because it was like, oh, null hypothesis. I've got this independent or dependent and then moved on. Mm -hmm. I guess like I have actually taken that class, but I wasn't sure like how to formulate it um, from the information. I don't know. Uh -huh. I was confused for some reason. Oh. But, yeah, that sounds good. I could probably make some changes on mine then. Mm -hmm. um, My question is, did you get, like, a ridiculous number, like, a ridiculously high number for um, the what? actually doing the chi-squared? 43.7. 43, when you actually ran it? Hmm. Um, well, I must have done something wrong. I got 72.45. Okay. So you counted, like, the total that were observed, right? Right. So you got 1,126. Yeah. 1,126 is the total. Wouldn't right. You and then you like multiplied each of the um, the fractions, like the nine sixteenths, three sixteenths, by uh -huh. that number, right? Yeah. And then you got the numbers, and so I don't know why our results would be different if we're using the same numbers. Well, maybe I did my math wrong. Did you get like? Um, for the first ratio, it'd be 633 in theory, like on the nine, like following the 9331 rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 
use decimal points, but oh. I got, yeah. Okay, so that's probably, that could be a bit of the difference, but in all intents and purposes, like when you run the chi squared, it's ridiculously bad. And then, like, you obviously have to reject the null hypothesis, right? Yeah. Um, do you want to, like, check to see that we got the other numbers the same? Yeah. So, so I, go ahead. Sorry. I got um, 211 for the three sixteenths, mm -hmm. and then um, there was two of those, so same answer. Mm -hmm. And then for the one sixteenth, I got 70. Right. Okay. Huh. And, then our actual, and then our actual count was the 562, 285, 232, and 47. Mm-hmm. So then where did I mess up? I might have done something wrong too. Um, you just plugged it into the formula, right? Yeah. 7.3 on the, well, oh, that's probably what I did right there. So, well, that wouldn't be that big of a difference. So it should be 7.30. And then 285 minus the 211, 74 squared divided by the 211. And that should be 25.95. And then 232 minus the 211 squared. And divide that by 211. And that's 2.09. And then 47 minus 20 squared divided by 20 and that's 36.45 wait for the last one yeah 47 minus 70 shoot you're right that's where i messed up i don't know why I wrote <laughs> 20. there it was so let's do that so 47 minus 70 squared divided by 20 that makes it well, that only takes me down to 20, that takes me down to 26.45, which only brings me down to 62.45. What was the first one again? The first one I got 7.3. So I got 8.043. Okay, so 562 minus 633 is negative 71 squared divided by 633. I, well, that time I got, okay. So we have 562, and we subtract the 633 of what we expect, and we square that number. And then we divide that by what we expected, and that's actually... So I just did that again. Well, you use decimals, right? Yeah. Did you do 7.9? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's going to be, like, similar, but okay. Well, reg regardless, like, we reject our null. Yeah. The chi-squared the chi thing, I was looking at that, and I was like, I really hope I did this one right, because this is, like, a blatantly did not work according to what we expected. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Price is averted. Yeah. Okay, so we reject our null and then just kind of figure out something from there. I just kind of put down a different ratio on there. I put a 9421. Um <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of put something down to I just said that there is significant difference between the observed garden P color and pod frequencies and the expected frequencies. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. I, I didn't know what to put down for a null hypothesis. If you've got a better idea, I'll take it. For but, the first one? Yeah. Yeah, I just said there wasn't a significant difference for the null, and then I changed it to there is a significant difference. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. All right, that works.
Okay. I had problems with um, the product in some rule, even though it's like super simple. I don't know why I had problems, but that's for number three. But. Okay. Do you want to skip down to that one, or do you want to go over two first? Um, we could just double check. We got the same thing really quick. Okay. Um, for two A, I thought it was incomplete dominance. What do you think it was? Um, I said co-dominance. Co-dominance. Yeah, I think because um. With codominance, there's both alleles present, and then for the incomplete, it was like a mixture of the two alleles. Uh huh. So like, that's what made me think. That's what made me think it was incomplete. Um, and like I was debating in between incomplete and codominance, but I guess codominance could work. Man, that's just a tough one because. Like incomplete dominance essentially would be like white, white and a red flowers, and if they mate, they're pink. So yeah, incomplete dominance doesn't really work there. But I didn't really, yeah, code, yeah. Now that I'm looking at that, you're right. Codominance is right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to get them mixed up though. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then um. The F1 offspring, let's see, whoops, F1 offspring, um, or no, 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 true beating normal is crossed, determine the phenotypes and the F1, okay, so all of the F1s are heterozygous for both, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so sweet, that took care of that, and then... That was what happened to my numbers here. And so then the next question is perform the chi square, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sweet. Okay. There we go. My num my like bullet points were off on that, and I was like, what? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure. Like, what did you use to compare like your value at the end? Did you use the um chart thing she gave us in the powerpoint yeah that's what i had to end up using because um i couldn't i couldn't really think of an easy quick way to like plug it into the stuff we used in biostats um so i decided just to use the little chart that she gave us like find the degree of freedom and just go over did you end up using something from biostats or no, I used that too. It was kind of hard though because it wasn't really accurate. Like it didn't have very many numbers on there, but yeah. At least my teacher, Brother Saunders, would be disappointed with that. You had Saunders? I did yeah, too. Yeah, did you? Yeah, he's the best one, I think. That's what I was saying. Crazy. When did you take that class? I just actually took it last semester. Like last spring? Um, yes. Oh, okay. I was about to say, like, if you took it last winter, we were in the same class. No. That was crazy. I don't have winter. What? You skipped uh -huh. out on our beautiful winter weather here? No. I'm actually staying, though. I'm doing an override this upcoming winter, so. Yeah. I love winter semester. I think it's great. Anyways. Yeah, I've heard it's lots of fun to sled, but still, it's cold. It'll be just a little bit cold. So for this problem, okay. So for C, what did I do when I did it out? For C, it looked like it was, it was moderately easy here. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have like a two-part. Chi squared, right? Did you do two chi square tests? Mm -mm. One. Yeah. So how'd you do just one? I wasn't really sure like how to do it. I just followed like the instructions that she said on the PowerPoint and the instruction or instructor's notes. Um so like I found the percent 
for each of the phenotypes. Right. And then I just plugged it into the equation. So what like, was your percent for the phenotypes? See, the reason the reason why I'm asking is like I decided to do two separate chi squares on it. Um, essentially because we have one chi square only has two phenotypes and the other one had three phenotypes. So I didn't think it meshed together at all. Yeah, it was confusing. I, I don't know. I just kind of went through like how they had all the names listed out like that and mm -hmm. did it all. And then just did a really long line. Like it's super long. All the way across. Oh dang! You did some work there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. So, did you end up rejecting your mole or keeping it? Um, I re I did uh fail to reject. Okay. When I when I did it as two separate chi squares, I I failed to reject the null for the shaker syndrome or the shaker, mm -hmm. um, whatever phenotype. But when I did a separate chi-square test for the null or for the uh, coat pigmentation, we ended up rejecting that. Mm. That's interesting. Why did I end up rejecting that? I guess I just kept it like together because it was like that for the P one. Uh huh. But I can see like why. You that you'd separate it since it had the co-dominant part to it. Yeah. Actually, I think I might have done this wrong, too, now that I'm looking at this and double-checking my math. Why would I have done... Yeah, that's weird. Actually, now that I'm double-checking my math, I don't reject my null for the other one, either. Okay, uh, so that works. Yeah. I think um, there is just more phenotypes because of the codominance, but it should yeah. work the same. Okay. Well, cool. And so then we just fail to reject the null there on D. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I'll have to change that answer there. That's fine. Okay. Do you, okay, so your number's probably not the same. No. The high square value. Well, my first, well, essentially it should just be both of those chi squares put together. So it should be 0.69 plus, it just depends on how many decimal points you put out. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be our difference. I our had a, mine was 4.768. Yours was 4.768? Yeah. Wow, I put my two chi-squares together and I get 1.9. Huh. I might have done it wrong. I might have. I probably did it wrong. I'm the one that's been messing up tonight. <laughs> You're good. Just wait till the next page, then, you know, you'll be helping me out a lot. <laughs> oh, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I'll have to go back over those ones. All right. So, we have our Alice in Wonderland cat. So, are you sure you're good? Like, do you want to go over them? Or you... No, I can. Essentially, it's the same. I just put the two chi-squares back together, and then it should just be fine. Okay. So, I'll be all right with that one. Okay. Well, this one's going to be fun. Don't ask for help on 3B. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Three. Okay, so three A. What is the probability that the first five have small grins and can disappear? So to me, this one was. Um, let's see which one. Which one was it? Which one? So I did the the I did the product rule. Okay. Because the product rule is independent events, and it's. Um, like the example at the end of the instructor's notes was, you know, probability that three children in a row, essentially this would be like the first five, right? 
Mm -hmm. five, the first five offspring in a row have small grins and can disappear. So I got 0 0.00023 probability for having all the first five have small grins and can disappear. I got the same thing. I just put it into the percentage. So it was 0 0.023. 0 0.023. Perfect. Okay, so we're solid on that. Cool. What did you think to do for 3B? <laughs> um, yeah, that one was confusing. Um, so this is what I did. It's probably wrong, but I found out the probability of having the large grin and the ability to disappear, and that was 9 sixteenths. And then um, since it said there is five, then I just added five of those fractions together because you'd use the sum rule because it says five can have large grins and can disappear. So the and is indicator that you'd use the sum rule, right? Um, or is that product rule? I think that would be... That would be the product rule, huh? That would be the product rule, because the sum rule is or. Hmm. So my thing with this is I was debating between, because I've done this problem like three times, actually. Um, is I was debating between doing binomial expansion on it or doing the product rule. And like having, cause like it says the probability. So our total is eight, right? And so I thought it could be the product rule by multiplying five, right? Or like finding the the ratio of um, large grins and can disappear, and then put and then essentially putting that to the fifth power. And then I was also thinking that it could be but the binomial expansion because on the instructor's notes she said it says um you do binomial expansion when you don't care about the order and we don't care about the order we just want the end result to be out of eight out of eight kids we have five and three mm -hmm. So I started to do the binomial equation and then I stopped thinking like, no, this isn't right. This can't, how am I going to put these both together? Cause when I did the binomial expansion, I had a 0.89 probability. So like an 89% of having five large grins and can disappear and a 40% probability of having three small grins and can disappear. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that adds up to more than one, and that does not work with probability. Yeah. Um. So I honestly cannot think of anything on that one. And you you did the product rule, you said? Um, so I used the sum rule and added all the fractions together. Mm -hmm. Um, nine sixteenths, and added them all together. Then I rule and multiplied that by three one sixteenths, because that's the fraction for the three or for the small grins that can't disappear. Mm. So I'll just show you; it's easier. Wow, that's quite the thing. So you added all of those up. Yeah, I don't know if that's right, though. Well, if you added all those up, doesn't it become more than 16? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Well, I was just thinking, like, you have to add all the probabilities of, like, okay, sorry, backtrack. Uh-huh. Um, you have to add up all the probabilities for the... Five. Ugh, I can't speak. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, in order to have a large grin and the ability to disappear, like you get one probability, but to have that happen five times, don't you have to like add all those probabilities together? 
I think in order to have it happen five times, you have to multiply it to the fifth power because they're mutually, what's the word? Mutually independent, mutually exclusive. That's it. Yeah. Um, because like having the, having the first, right. Like having one can smile big and disappear doesn't affect having another one. Mm -hmm. So the, or one is if you have two options and that's the sum rule. And then the product rule is if they're mutually independent. So would you. So it sounds like you're multiplying five, nine sixteenths, and then you multiply that by the three sixteenths. Yeah, the three one is three, it is it one sixteenth? Yeah, that is small yeah, grins. Three of one sixteenth, yeah. <coughs> um that sounds like it works. That's just a very small probability. Cause I ran through that one too. Like I've been working on this problem for a couple of hours and I just cannot because it'd be what would it be? It'd be the so in order to have a large grin and can disappear. So that's like that's three fourths times. So that's the nine sixteenths. And you would have that to the fifth. And then you would multiply the one sixteenth to the third. And that would give you this super tiny probability. Does that sound right? I feel like that's following the rules that we were taught. I don't know, though. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anybody else, like, had this question, like, problems with it and wrote on that, like, discussion thing. I just checked it. There were there was a question about the chi squared test, and the one question on here that on the individual assignment that didn't actually have a question on it. Oh yeah, I was like, "What's this supposed to be for?" What yeah, I, I just I just put on there. I put great. What's the question? And I turned it in. Like I don't care okay. if you, if your assignment does not tell me exactly what's what is needed to do. I don't care. Yeah. I didn't really know what to do either. Um, so, I don't know. I'm probably just going to do that, do the exponents, and then multiply them together. Yeah, that's probably going to be the best bet. And that's what I'm working on right now. I'm just running through it again. Okay. And so, I've got a point zero five six times one. This calculator is going to bite the dust on me, on me one day and I'm going to be pissed. When is it you, expensive? No, it's just I've had it for forever. Like It is like this dinosaur of a calculator. Yeah. It's like faded out. Like You can only see it if you're like directly <laughs> over it or at an angle. It's just I've had it since like sixth or seventh grade so i just know how to work it the best but it does the job right it does the job so i've got a point zero 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 two four times point zero five six and that gives me like point zero zero so like point four zeros one three four four i got something really similar but it was 1.37 to the negative fifth power. 1.37? 1 1 yeah. Yeah, so that's probably just because you had extra decimals in there. Mm. But so, there are fractions that we used. What? It should be the same, though. Well, I rounded off. Oh. I okay. Cool. I ain't got time for tons of decimal points. <clears throat> but yeah, so like if, if I put my answer into scientific notation, it's 1.34 and yours is 1.37. Okay. So. I just have um, this button that I can plug in the fraction, which is pretty nice. So. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Wish I had some of those fancy gadgets. <laughs> 
Hey, so you're in Chem 105, right? Yeah. You already take your first exam? Nope. Taking it tomorrow, and, like, I know that I'm going to be really bad. Who's your professor? Um, his name's Bossereal, Brother hmm. B. Because I was talking with some other, because, like, I have the chemistry lab, too, and I was talking with them, and, like, most of the other classes have taken their tests already, and mine hasn't, and then yours hasn't, so, okay. Yeah, we're behind. I know that for sure. Yep, so are we. All right, so 3C, um, probability or, so this one's your adding. Mm hmm so when I did this, um, for the small and can disappear, I had one fourth times three fourth, which give which gave me three sixteenth. And then for the other one we wanted, I had one fourth times a fourth, which was one sixteenth. Four sixteenth probability is one fourth, twenty five. Yep. Sweet. That's a relaxing problem. Okay. Yeah, and then D, you just do it the same as B though, right? D? Yeah. Um you um Yeah, I, I think it's the same idea. Have small grins and can't disappear. Yeah, shoot, I did that one wrong. So let's re let's so it's Something. just like the nine sixteenth to the fourth power. And then you times that by the one sixteenth to the fourth power, right? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Well, I'm glad you said something on that one because I think at this point, because I did this one yes, I did these ones yesterday. Uh huh. I was really exhausted yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I think I just powered through that one. I put like nine over two hundred fifty six, and I see what I did wrong. So that was dumb. No. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, let's, let's do the pedigree charts real quick here. Okay. Um, autosomal dominant, I put for 4A. What do you think? Yeah, me too. Okay. I could not find a way that it could be sex-linked, and I couldn't figure out a way that it could be X-linked or uh, autosomal recessive. Yeah. Because, yeah, I thought it was the autosomal because it affected males and females evenly and mm. then like there's no skips so that would seem like it's dominant yeah cool then for b did you get y linked yeah for b i put y linked and then because no females get affected and then the last few ones were a bit tricky for me. Uh, for C, I put autosomal recessive. Same. Okay. And then gross, second, first cousins got married and had kids. That's gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, excellent. And then for D, I put excellent recessive. Yep. Okay. Whew. <laughs> these ones kind of tested me. Normally, these ones are easy for me, but these last few, these last few pedigrees were kind of difficult. Yeah, they were tricky. I had to go through my notes again. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, autosomal recessive. Yup. And same thing. Grow well. It doesn't show it, but I think the double barred line there on F three in between individuals two and three. I think that also means that like, they were related. Oh, gross. Gross. Uh, my Bio 181 teacher, Brother Kelson, he is another teacher for this course. He, like, used, like, when he, he has his doctorate in all of this, he said when he, like, would do stuff for people in Utah, he would find that people were related to each other all the time. That's like, really gross. <laughs> <laughs> like, couples that were, like, you know, four cousins, like, apart. Mm -hmm. Not even like he said, you know, there were a couple of them that they were like first cousins and like knew each other the whole time pretty much and didn't even know that they were related. That's really gross. <laughs> yeah, was, we were like, are you serious? Oh, that's so gross. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, 
fill in the blanks. So for 5A, I put sum for the first and chi squared for the second. Okay. I keep getting sum and products mixed up. Mm-hmm. Well, well, wait a second. Maybe I got that one wrong now that I'm thinking about it. Independent events. Okay, so independent is product, and mutually exclusive is sum. Okay, cool. That's going to have to be a... Oh, that makes sense. So if you think about it, sum has an M in it, and mutually exclusive does too. I'll remember that. Thank you. <laughs> I'll remember that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then... For 5B, I put X-linked recessive and X-linked dominant. Yep. Sweet. Um, sum rule for 5C. Mm-hmm. Uh, mutually exclusive. Yep. For D. Um, autosomal recessive and Y-linked. Yep. Sweet. F, I didn't know what it was. Sample size. Okay. That was like, let's see. I think that was just like the first little, or um, excuse me. It should be sampling error decreases as the sample size increases. So it's either, oh, hold on. I'm, hold on. Maybe it's, it's either random sampling error is high when analyzing in, inheritance because the sample size that should yeah it should be sample size yeah that makes sense because we learned if the sample size is higher the error goes down right sweet and then i put the degrees of freedom for g yep sweetness awesome all righty well good luck on the test this week thank you yeah and i need all the luck i can get <laughs> I'm trying to work through some of my chemistry homework right now, and just it's so annoying. I just I can't get motivated to do it. Yeah, it's really difficult, especially when like you're not understanding it, and it goes so fast in class sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, if there's ever uh, anything with chemistry you like need help with or something, you can bonehead it through with me. Just shoot me an email or something. That's so nice of you. I might take you up on that. I know how busy you are, though. So. Hey, I've had a lot of people help me my years here, so I might as well help somebody out when I can. <laughs> That's so nice. Well, have a good evening. You too. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.